Hi everyone, this is Josh from the Narrate team. In the final part of Narrate's series, Gifting Wonder, our guest speaker and improv comedian, James Busher, asked the question, what can improv comedy teach us about wonder? James shares parts of the Bible and principles of improv that support wonder in relationships. I have to admit I've never seen that movie. I know, I'm, and I don't want to. <laughs> Sorry, I know that for some of you guys, that's like your happy place, but I'm kind of a Chevy Chase kind of guy, so that's my Christmas show. <laughs> so uh, if you've been a part of this series with us, you kind of know where we're working on, and if, for those of you that are guests, we, we started a conversation several weeks ago called Gifting Wonder, and it's a conversation about conversations. It's a, a series where we're asking questions about asking questions, and we really started by just talking about the... The, the, the incredibly rare gift of, of interest, of wonder, that, that sometimes the, the greatest gift we can give is asking someone else a question and really caring about the answer and really engaging them. And then we, we from there, that was pre-Thanksgiving, and then we kind of deviated for a few weeks and, and talked about what it looks like when wonder is a part of our relationship with God and, and, and if that's okay and maybe even if that's essential. And then we kind of purposely this morning are coming back to this whole idea of wonder in our interactions with others. And uh, this morning, you're going to get to hear from a guy named James. Now, a little bit of backstory. Several, I suppose it's probably been six months ago, I sat down with James. Uh, and I can't remember what the occasion was for our having coffee or the conversation, but but he was sharing that, that there's an organization in Chicago called Second Cities, and that Second Cities is, I, I believe he said, the largest improv group in the country. But interestingly enough, that, that there's two really branches of Second Cities, that there's the improv, and he's going to talk a little bit more about what that is this morning, but then there's also a business consulting side of Second Cities. And what he was sharing was that they, they go and they meet with these, in some cases, Fortune 500 companies and individuals and businesswomen and businessmen. And, and they, what they do is get them thinking about how the principles of improv are the principles of sales, are the principles of counseling, are the principles of relationship in general. And so as he shared that, I was kind of trafficking then this whole idea of gifting wonder at the, at myself at the time. And so we circled back to that. And a few months ago, the creative team went to him and said, hey, what if, what if our last gathering at the Grand Street b before Christmas Eve at the Civic Center, what, what if you unpacked the principles of, of improv and, and kind of did improv and at the same time helped us understand why those principles matter in the everyday? And I need to get out of his way. But the other thing that I'll say here this morning is from day one, our dream has been to knock down some walls between the sacred and the secular, uh, thinking that those are all too often terms that, that, are mute, that, are, that are misused and that like what's true out there is true in here. And so we've often celebrated people who, and it's why we're doing TEDx next month, like pe people who take the, the wisdom and the truth of their sector, your sector, and, and implement that in the kingdom. And that's what we're getting to do this morning with a guy named James who, some of you will remember, James was the first paid student staff that we had here at, at Narrate. Uh, at the time, he was a new graduate from Carroll, this young leader who we were very excited about, and just such a thrill to see him continue to grow into the ways God has called and equipped him. And so would, would, you, help me, would you help me welcome James? He's going to jump up here. All right, James. Have fun, man. Thank you, Adam. That's, that's my first line. Um, also, okay, walk to the middle of the stage. Cool, awesome, great. And uh, say good morning to the audience. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you guys know your lines. This is awesome. Great. Um, oh, shoot, where am I? Uh, do you get, uh, what's my next line? Do you guys know? Do you, get, do you not have your script? Do you guys not have your scripts? No? Do you, I, got, I got my script on my pillow this morning that told me what I'm supposed to do and say today. Script, December 20th, 2015. Do you get, no? Yeah? Do you guys have that? I, uh, I guess I don't either because I printed this off as a prop. So um, that's the point though, right? Is that we don't get scripts for the ways that we're supposed to live our life. We don't give scripts of what, what we're supposed to say every day and what we're supposed to do and, and where we're supposed to go, right? We make it up, right? When you're talking with your friends, you make it up. Yeah, you know, you know what you're going to say. You listen, and then and then you and then you play off of that, and then you and then you move forward, right? And that's essentially what improv comedy is as well. So if you're not super uh, super familiar with improv comedy, you may have seen like the, the old show Whose Line Is It Anyway, 
Yeah, people have seen that. Um, so that's like one piece of improv comedy. But improv is so much bigger than that. Improv is this huge thing that's kind of this backbone of uh, a big piece of like the comedy in America, right? So people like Steve Carell and Stephen Colbert and Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and on and on and Chris Farley and all these people have roots in improv comedy. And there's this big, there's this big world of improv, all right? And so there's, there's tons of different schools of thought on improv and different ways to do it. And uh, there's, and of those schools, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that pretty much everybody agrees on and these basic principles that everyone can kind of stack hands on and how those kind of relate to uh, our experiences working with people, living with people, and interacting just in a culture in general, okay? So, but before we do that, just to kind of get our feet wet, we're going to play a little bit of improv. We're going to do a little bit of improv right now. So I'm going to ask Annette to come on out. Annette is part of Cow Tipping Comedy with me. Everybody Hello. say hi, Annette. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. So Annette and I do uh, Cow Tipping Comedy together. And you may recognize her from some pictures downstairs. She does stuff here as well and has done stuff here at the Grand Street as well. So uh, we're going we're gonna to start off with a game that's called What Did You Say? So the way that this game works is we're going to act out a scene, and any time during that scene, I can say to Annette, what did you say? And she has to repeat the last line she said, except she's got to change it a little bit, and she has to rhyme the last word. So if, uh, if she says, um, I got to go, and I say, what did you say? She'll say, uh, the lawn needs to be mowed. Okay, so it changes the line, and then we move forward from there. And then she can say, what did you say to me at any time as well? And we'll change the line and rhyme it and move forward from there, all right? Rules, rules clear? Awesome, good. So what we need to get going, I need your, I'm going to need your help a little bit this morning. Um, I, need a, I need a location that would maybe fit, like, on this stage. Delivery room. Delivery room. Delivery room. <laughs> Fantastic. I was like, for, like, a package? <laughs> like... <laughs> Is this like a room at UPS? <laughs> uh, now I know what you're talking about. Um, delivery room. Fantastic. So I'm going to count down, and then we're going to get going. At the end, I'll just say scene, and we'll move on. All right? Five, four, three, two, one. I think my water just broke. Good thing that you're here. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> the commute is great. You know what? Why don't you just, why don't you just prop up on a wall over there? I'll get a doctor or something. It'll be all right. What'd you just say? I don't want to fight. What? Wait, what, what'd you say? We're going to be here all night. Oh, man. It's going to be a long night. Oh, I'm in pain. What'd you say? I said, I, I feel like I'm getting a migraine. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of gross right there. <laughs> man. So... I think it was a false alarm. We're good. Just a couple, couple little contractions here and there. So did you, did you pee? <laughs> it, it could have been. What did it, you say? It, I, I said, I feel like a hen today. I just kind of like, you know, yeah, they, you... They, they don't have the best bladders. So I, I kind of was just, you know, I, I'm all right now, though. Yeah, yeah watch out. Don't slip. <laughs> it's kind of crazy in here in this delivery room. Well, if you're not pregnant, why are we here? Or you're not delivering. What'd you say? Uh, uh, I want a lima bean. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Annette. Let's hear it for Annette. She'll be back. She'll be back. We're going to play some more games. So that's essentially what improv comedy looks like. Uh, we kind of just make it up on the spot. And like I said, since we generally make up our conversations on the spot as we go throughout our life, this may have some implications for us. So you may be sitting there going, okay, cool, great, awesome. So if you're going to teach me how to be funny or how to do this stuff on stage, why, like, uh, why am I here? Because first off, I think a lot of people have some misconceptions that improv is people getting on stage and talking. But that's not really true. Improv at its root is people getting on stage and listening. Um, and so if you, if you communicate with people, if you have friends, 
If you have a spouse, if you want a spouse, if you play on a team, work on a team, work at a company, um, lead people, anything like this, improv can help you out. So um, unless you're like a friendless, jobless um, hermit, well, A, first off, good job getting here. Good job. That's, <laughs> we're really proud of you. B, um, unfortunately, you can like go back to your cave this morning because uh, these these improv principles apply to pretty much any realm that we communicate with people. Okay, so the first the first big idea that pretty much everybody stacks their hands on is this is this idea of yes and. Okay, so yes and has has two has two kind of meanings. Okay, there's the literal meaning of yes and, which means when someone offers you something on stage, you say yes to that, okay? So here's a cup of coffee. Yeah, awesome, I love coffee. And do we have creamer? So that's, that's the literal yes and. We say yes, and then we say and. But then there's, a, there, then there's a bigger picture behind it that's a philosophical piece, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But let's, let's kind of talk about how this works and what this looks like um, in an improv scene. So you guys are gonna be my scene partner, Okay, and I'm going to ask you some questions. You have one line. Your line is yes. Cool. So uh, I'm going to ask you some questions and you reply yes and we'll see where this goes. Okay. Uh, Do you guys want to go on a journey with me? Cool. Uh, Do you guys want to like leave the Shire? Do you want to follow this wizard dude? Do you want to take this little piece of jewelry to a volcano? Cool. Do you want to do you want to throw it in and save all of Middle Earth? Yes. Awesome. Cool. Let's do that. That sounds great. Should we have maybe just used eagles to begin with? Yes. Yeah. That that would have been that would have been a lot easier. Cool. Great. So um, we just saved we just saved a fictional universe. That's fantastic. Um, now let's see what happens if you reply with no. Okay. Um, your only line right now is no. Uh, you guys want to go on a journey with me? All right. Cool. I guess Sauron wins. This is so. What happens when we say no is that we stop the possibility of creating something together. Okay, which leads me to the to the philosophical level of yes and yes and when we really break it down means that we start with agreement and we move toward collaboration. Okay, saying yes is saying, I agree with what's happening here. I agree with what we're trying to do together. Okay, and then moving toward collaboration and means that we're going to move forward together. Okay, we're going to create something together. All right, so this is central to improv. We can't really go anywhere if I go, hey, Dave, and you go, my name's not Dave. I'm a polar bear. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Great. Um... Sweet. Let's figure out what happens then. So, because we got to say yes, right? We got to say yes to these things that are offered. And this, on a philosophical level, starting with agreement and moving toward collaboration moves beyond this literal piece of saying yes. Because we're, what we're really agreeing on is, is something bigger than the two people on stage. We're agreeing that we're going to build a scene together. We're agreeing that we're going to build a world together. Okay? And so when we, when we think about that world that we're going to build, that thing that's bigger than us, we can start from a place that says, we're going to do this. We're going to go into this together, and we're going to keep creating until we have something awesome. All right? So um, when we kind of break from this, this, literal, this literal translation of yes and to the, to the underlying idea, we get to this, this thing. We're going to do another scene, okay? And... This is a scene where your, your line again right now is just to say yes, okay? So uh, we're, we're on the top of a building, all right? I'm on top of a building. You're, you're there with me. And I'm standing on the edge, and I say, I'm going to jump. Do you think I should? Yes. Cool. And then, and then I jump, and the scene is over. So you may have literally said yes, but... You're not agreeing to the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that we're going to create something together. And if I leave that scene by jumping off the building, then we don't have anything else. So now, so now just say, so now say no. I'm, I'm going to jump. Do you think I should? 
oh, great, why? <laughs> so then we can have a conversation. Oh, you have so much to live for. Oh, you're still in the scene with me. This is great. So you may have literally said no, but you're agreeing to something bigger because I don't want to, I don't want to be confused and, um, or I don't want to confuse you guys and say like, you need to say yes to everything. Anyone that any, anything that anyone asks you, you got to say yes to that because that's how we end up like strung out on the side of the highway because someone said, do you want some crack? Yes. <laughs> no, like we're agreeing on something bigger, right? We're agreeing. And in relationships or in, or in a business, this could be like, we want the best thing for this business, right? We want the best thing for this relationship. We're in this together. I care about you. So if I enter this relationship agreeing that I, I, I already care about you, we're going to go someplace better than if I walk in going, mm, I, don't know if, I don't know if you're really that valuable. Like, this is a waste of my time. I don't know why I'm here. But if we say, oh, this person has something to contribute. This person, this person has some ideas inside their head that, that are great. Okay, um, so that's that's the basic rundown of yes and. So we're gonna we're gonna play another scene that kind of uh, illustrates this. So if, Annette, if you want to come on back out, um, this is a game called Double Endowment. So the way this game works, the guys in the back have um, have chosen some uh, some location. They've chosen a location for us first off, and we're gonna we're gonna see that location. TV room. We're in the we're in the TV room. Fantastic. So we're in a TV room, and I have. Uh, I have a task that I want to get Annette to complete without, without like saying like, Hey, will you do this? Like, I'm going to imply that, that I need this thing done. Okay. So she's going to close her eyes, look at the ground and I'm going to look at what that is. Sweet. Awesome. So I have to get, I have to get her to do that. Okay. And then she has a task that she's going to try to get me to complete. So I'm going to look down and she's going to see what she's got to do. Cool. Cool. You got it? <laughs> so when, when one of us completes that, when one of us does this task, I need you guys to cheer so that, like, we know that, we know that we've done it. Okay? Cool? So we're in a TV room. We each have our tasks that we're trying to get each other to complete. Um, all right. This is double endowment in five, four, three, two, one. I'm kind of getting tired cleaning, but it's okay. You just sit there and, you know, I should just bring it to you, right? You just Awesome. Wanna... Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. You're so good at, at bringing me things while cleaning. Oh, no. I dropped my oh, no. snack. Oh, no. Oh. There you go. Oh, awesome. Oh. Thank you. Oh. oh, thanks. That is so here, good. Here, let me change this for you. You want to have some fun? Here. Uh, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, just find your little it up. that little remote for the you know uh-huh. the things you love to do. You just want to. I just want to do them. I just want to watch some TV. Mm. I just you've really, done that all morning. Let's just. I uh, want to get out of the TV room and and do some chores. No, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I, Come on now. That's, that, that's my job. That's what I. Well, that's what I want to do. Oh, just relax. Okay. You know, well, you know what. Up. I'll do that later. I have two remotes. Get into your little animated popcorn. world, the little yeah. people and I'm, those little fighter guys. Right. Play yeah. some video games. That's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Annette. <laughs> Good job. So we, uh, we each got each other to accomplish the task that we, are, uh, that we were trying to accomplish. What often happens in this game, um, if we don't, when we start playing it, when we practice it, um, is that that we're kind of, we kind of make these like contracts. We kind of go like, okay, I'll do just a second. I'll do that thing maybe in a second. Um, but what if you do this thing first? Like, no, oh, okay. I'll, I'll clean up the popcorn. But what if you did, what if you did your thing first? I'm not going to do it until then. Because we have this, we have this thing in our head that says like, I have to win this. I have to win. If I get them to do my thing first, then I win. But that's, that's counterintuitive to the way that improv works. We got to strip down the, we got to strip down this competitive thing because that's, that's not how it works. How, how a scene works best in improv is if I support you and if I say yes to what you're doing, then, then we win. Then we together create something better than either of, either of us could have created on our own, 
right? And so I think this translates, this translates out of here. I think that we have a tendency to be competitive and say, I got to I got to do this. I got to be the best at this. I got to be, I got to really shine in this meeting so that my boss sees that I, I'm super, I'm super into this and I have the best ideas, right? But I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's how this works because I think that comes from a place of fear. And that fear is that like, well, what if they look better than I do? Well, what if, what if I'm not, what if I'm not good enough, right? What if I don't, what if I don't have the best idea? Because I think that, in, in improv, we, we really subscribe to this idea that a mediocre idea with fantastic support will be a great idea. But a brilliant idea with no support will fail. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. And what that does, it does two things. Is that in a scene, if my scene partner has an okay idea and I jump on that and I build it up, then we can create something really good together. And, that, and, and I, get to, I get to come in and say, like, oh, geez. Oh, I don't have to come up with this brilliant like concept before I get on the stage. All I need is the person that I'm going on stage with because they have all the ideas that I need. And if I just jump on that, then we're going to go somewhere. And if, and if we go into a meeting going like, oh, we got to figure out how to, how to accomplish this task. Maybe you don't need to have the brilliant idea, but you've got to go into that meeting going, I'm going to support what happens in here with brilliant support. I'm going to get behind it and we're going to, we're going to talk an idea out till its end and see if we can make an okay idea work really well because we're all behind it. Right? So this, this is a huge piece of improv that, that like my goal is to make you look good. Okay. I'm walking on stage. I'm walking on stage with the goal of making my scene partner look as good as possible with helping them out. Okay. I'm not, I'm not on stage trying to make a laugh or make the funny joke. The best improvisers are people who set other people up to succeed, right? To, who set other people up to do well. So in, in some improv uh, theaters, just along the back wall, it says, it just says in big letters, help. And if we kind of moved our brains into that, into that kind of world where we just interacted with people with an idea of like, how, how can I help? What can I do? What can I do to make, to make you better? How can I help you? What, what does that do for my perspective and the, the way that I interact with people? If I'm going in saying, we're going to start with agreement and I'm going to support you and I'm going to help you and I'm going to figure out what you need. And I think this, this idea is not foreign to the text either. Um, I, the text describes when Jesus washes the disciples' feet as as one of his greatest acts of love of serving them, right? And it's a big piece of the way narrate is uh, the way narrate is built. And so in Romans, um, Paul takes it Paul takes it a little further, and he just says, "Be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves." Okay, and then in, and then in sixteen, live in harmony with one another. And then in eighteen. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And he doesn't go on to say, unless they're Republican or Democrat or communist, right? He says, as far as it depends on you, whatever you can do, live at peace with everyone. Okay? Start with agreement. Start with agreement that you have value, right? And they're going to do what they're going to do. But that's that's another piece of the of, of improv is that I walk on I walk on the stage and kind of like we've talked about in the past few weeks is it, in a covenant agreement that I'm going to support you. I'm going to get behind you. I'm going to make you look good no matter what you do. You don't have to make me look good. I'm going to get on stage and support you no matter what. Right. As far as it depends on me. I'm going to do whatever I can to help you. Okay, so this is this is a big this is a big improv idea that improv doesn't exist, and I think it has pays huge dividends beyond this. So, um, so then, how do we know? How do we know what we're saying yes to? How do we know what we're agreeing on? How do we know how to help somebody? Uh, that comes to the next big idea of, of pay attention. Um, we gotta know, we gotta know what's going on. Really simply in improv, we gotta know what's happening on stage. Um, if I don't pay attention to my scene partner. They may go, oh, here's a cup of coffee, and I'll go, 
mm, this orange juice is great. And then everybody goes, what? That guy totally didn't listen. And that happens. But we want to we wanna get to a place where we pay attention to what somebody needs on stage. We pay attention to what they're saying. And we're going we're gonna to illustrate this, as, this idea as well before we dive in. So, Annette, if you want to come on back out, we're going to play a game called Alphabet. So the way Alphabet works is that we're going to act out a scene, and every line that we have um, needs to start with the next consecutive letter of the alphabet. So if we start on A, I say, all right, let's get going. And she says, better not be late. Yep, on and on until we go through the whole alphabet. Okay, so again, we need a, we need a location to get started. North Pole, Pole, fantastic, (laughs) Christmassy, nice and Christmassy. And then we need a, uh, and then we need a, um, a letter from the alphabet to start on. H, cool, I hope I remember my alphabet. Um, Last service, Pat improvised with me and he said that since I'm an English teacher, I really should. But I don't like stare at the alphabet all day. <laughs> so, uh, all right, we're going to go through the alphabet. North Pole in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, I think I, I have most of the toys all ready for Santa. I love this one. It's so cool. This one is, man, it's, it's the best present ever. <laughs> joking, aren't you? Are you joking a little bit? It's really... Kelly, this is a great truck. This is a fantastic truck that you made. I'm I'm really proud of you. Your elfing skills have come along fantastically. Lovely. (laughs) Man, I just wish it... I wish I I could be on the, you know, the, the truck line. That I could make trucks with you guys, but I'm stuck over in Candy Cane Village. Oh, never mind that. You can come help us. I think that Santa would love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you think I need so? The help. Yeah, I like the candy canes anyways. We could kind of switch if you wanted to. Kind of tired making the trucks. Quillbog! <laughs> <laughs> Which is elf for cool. <laughs> That's great. I'm really excited about this. Right on. So do we just, do you think I should just pop into the line? you think he's going to notice if I, if I just jump on the, you know, truck making line? Thankfully, I don't think he will. I, I think he's, he's actually been, he's been on my side lately. I have him on speed dial, so I could just call him if you want and ask him. Unfortunately, and fortunately, I guess around this time of year, Santa gets a little tipsy. <laughs> so he's probably not going to notice if I, if I switch, right? Mm, very true. <laughs> very true. Yeah. He was a little tipsy last night, actually. Where do we where do we uh, where do we get the the supplies? This is this is I'm really interested in in taking the step forward. <laughs> Xylophone making is like <laughs> the last thing. <laughs> That I want to do, okay? Because I was doing that. I was doing that before I was in Candy Cane Village, and I was not very good at the xylophones. Um, but you know, I'm I'm really excited about these trucks. Yeah, you're amazing. You are. Zowie. <laughs> Boy, am I excited! It's gonna be a great year. As I think so as well. <laughs> Better watch out. Cry, I better not. (laughs) Did you hear what happened to the elf next door? Did you hear what happened? Everyone knows. (laughs) Friggin' Earl. Grr, he's in trouble. Howdy. <laughs> all right, so we got all the way through. 
Good job. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was good. The alphabet is way harder to remember than you think. Um, but so, so what we have to do really literally in that game is pay attention to what was said, right? We have to know, we have to know what letter was just, uh, was just said and so, that, so that we can move on and, and play the game right, right? But this is, this is true beyond the improv stage. And when we're meeting with people, when we're, when we're trying to like, build a plan together. I had a, I had a guy who took my class. Uh, my improv class, and he came back one week and he said, well, I was, in a, I was in a collective kind of bargaining meeting this last week, and because I was practicing so well on trying to understand what, where people are coming from and trying to understand um, what's being said in improv, I felt like I really heard what, uh, what, the, what the people on the other side of the table really needed and really wanted, and, and I feel like I tuned in more to what was being said because of because of these skills of just listening better and listening with listening with our eyes and understanding paying attention with our eyes to say like oh you look uncomfortable you look like something's something's off uh, I just read a an article about how this this medical school is starting to use improv as part of their mandatory curriculum so folks who are folks who are becoming doctors and who are training to become doctors have to take an improv class for a few reasons. Uh, and a big one of them is a big one of them is this listening and paying attention piece. Uh, one of the guys in the in the story said that he he had to deliver some bad news to uh, to one of his patients and and that she was that she was going to die in the next couple of weeks. And he walked into that conversation and he started talking and he started giving her big medical words and he started with this. Uh, with these really confusing terms, and he and he was paying attention enough to see, like, oh, she does not know what I'm saying. I've got to I've got to readjust right here, and so he readjusted, and so he broke it down into very simple terms, and then, and then he just sat with her, you know, and she started crying, and he said he just sat with her, and he and he felt this freedom to do that because. He understood how she felt because he had listened and paid attention and walked with her through this discovery of really bad news. And so he got to just sit with her in that moment. And I think this, this again, touches on, touches on some big ideas from the text that, uh, that James talks about in James, James 1. He says, my dear brothers, take, uh, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So, like, what happens if we listen first? What happens if we walk into the room, walk into a conversation saying, what do you, what do you want to tell me? What do you, what do you have going on? What, what do you want to share? Because if we know that first, then we can know how to come alongside that person. And we can see this. Um, my dad does, my dad works at a college in Missouri and he, uh, and he runs these, these mission trips and these partnerships with, com- with communities. And it's a big piece of what he does is to help them improve their community. And a huge piece of it is saying, what are you guys, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing well already? What do you guys, where do you guys want to improve? Okay, great. How can we come alongside you? Instead of this model that says, I know what a community needs to look like. And, and we're going to change everything that you're doing to fit this mold, right? Instead, they go in and say, what do you guys need? What do you do? What's working? Let's bolster that and make it better. Let's help because we understand what's going on. All right? And so then um, that leads us to, that's a big piece of the, the agreement part, the understanding part. We know where we're coming from and where we can go. So, so now let's talk about the collaboration part, the and of yes and. So the and piece here is a uh, is a is a is a huge a huge piece moving forward. And, and I and I got to this part. Um, I was running this this idea this this talk by my wife, and I said, "All right, so we've got a we've got a." we've got to really uh, respond honestly because we've already done, we've already listened, we've already said yes and, we've already agreed. So now how do we move forward? 
And, the, and a huge piece of this is responding honestly. And I got to this piece, and I saw my wife, and like she started crying. And I was like, oh, man, this is really bad, huh? Like, I'm not doing well, right? I'm uh, the, sorry. Like, I, just, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and, and she was like, no, 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 no. I just want, I just want to make sure that you talk about uh, the importance of responding honestly. Because in an improv scene, we know, that, we know that when we respond from a place of honesty, that it ends up being way better because those are real motivations. And that for something to be funny, it has to be true first. So if, if, something is, if something is so out of the realm of possibility that nobody relates to it, then no one's going to laugh. No one's going to say, I identify with that. That's really funny. But when, but when you respond from a place of honesty, you can build something that people relate to. And then stepping beyond that um, into our everyday lives, responding honestly gives us the opportunity to say, okay, I heard you. Great. I hear where you're coming from. And now we can move toward collaboration because this is what, this is what I think. This is where I stand. All right. And this is, this comes down to something, to something really simple. And I mean, in, in relationships with friends, in relationships with, uh, with spouses, with coworkers, with things like this, um, it's incredibly important that we say what we mean and mean what we say, right? Because if, if, if you're hiding things and if you're keeping things inside and not relaying that information, then they don't know how you feel, right? So if, if your husband or wife is saying, uh, I, w- I want to go golfing today, um, is that cool? And in your head you're going, oh, you go golfing like every weekend and leave me alone with the kids and I love hanging out with them, but I would really love some help and maybe I would love some time on my own. And you're saying that inside your head and you're going, no, no, it's cool. That's going to build to resentment, right? That's going to build to like, you always go out. And then you might ask like, well, okay. If you're that person's friend, you may say, why don't you just tell them that you don't want them to go golfing all the time? Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. What if they, what if, what if they get mad? Well, I don't, what if, what if you just keep getting resentful? Right? Because if you just say, you know what, I would really love if you would hang out with us today. I would really love if you would be here. Then you can have a conversation that moves forward and says, oh, this is how I feel. This is how you feel. We're having this conversation under an agreement that we care about each other, all right, and that we want the best for each other. And if we have that agreement in place already, then we just say what we mean. Right, and this is this again is not a foreign idea to the text. This is Jesus talks about this in his Sermon on the Mount. He says he just says simply, "Let your yes be yes and your no be no." Someone asks you a question, "Is this cool with you?" And you say no, but you mean yes. Bad news. Like that's not going to work out well. If if you mean no, say no. If you mean yes, say yes. So these these big ideas allow us. They allow us to move forward with each other. They allow us to build something together. Okay, so I think my hope for my hope for this is that we can take some of these ideas, and that we can be the kind of people who start from a place of agreement and move toward collaboration. Okay, that we can be the kind of people that listen first and second and third, and then respond when we really understand what the person that we're talking to really needs. Okay? And that when we do respond, we respond from a place of honesty. That we respond from a place that says, awesome. Here's what I think. Here's how I think we can move forward. This is where I stand. And this is where we can go together. And my hope is that we can do that in service of something bigger than us. In improv, that thing bigger than us is the scene. In life, I think that thing bigger than us can be a lot of stuff. I mean... For me, as someone who follows Jesus, I think that that idea is to serve something bigger than myself and that something bigger is the kingdom of God. And that the best way to do that, to do that is just, just simply ask, like, how can I help you? How can I support you? How can I come alongside you? So...
That's all I've got. I'm going to pray. Thanks, God. Thanks for, thanks for all you do for us and the ways that you show us that we can help the people around us and the ways that we can step into other people's lives and, and listen to where they're coming from and then give them, give them the gift of our honesty and give them the gift of our agreement that they matter. And I pray that we can do that in service of you. Amen. If you would like to engage further with Narrate Church, you can find contact information online, www.narratechurch.org. We would love to hear from you.